Hamas has moved to join the Palestine Liberation Organization, a key step towards unifying the long-divided Palestinian leadership. Hamas's leader, Khaled Mashal, on Thursday joined a committee that will prepare for elections to the PLO leadership. Those elections are likely years away, but Mashal's move means he will work with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, head of the rival Fatah party. Thursday's development is an important step towards reconciliation between Hamas and Fatah, which have been split since Hamas seized control of the Gaza Strip in 2007. Members of several Palestinian factions met in Cairo on Thursday as part of reconciliation efforts between Fatah and Hamas. Israel has rejected the reconciliation efforts, refusing to negotiate with the government, including Hamas, whose charter calls for the destruction of Israel. Israeli defense officials are worried about an increase in violent activity by Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, agreeing with a French assessment that the Shia group is responsible for recent strikes against the UN force in the area. Israeli experts are also probing possible connections between Hezbollah and the two recent firings of Katusha rockets into Israel. These developments may indicate a change in Hezbollah's policy and may be linked to the erosion of Bashar Assad's regime in Syria. On Wednesday, IAF Commander Major General Ido Nehru Hushtan stressed that the northern border will continue to be on top of the agenda for the Air Force. A Syrian military operation in a stronghold of army deserters has killed a total of more than 250 people. France called the escalating violence an unprecedented massacre and urged Russia and China, Syria's traditional allies, to speed up negotiations on a draft resolution on Syria at the United Nations Security Council. The opposition, Syrian National Council, which groups some 140 leaders, called on the Security Council and Arab League to hold emergency meetings to discuss the Syrian crisis and urge the international community to act to stop the violence. The United Nations says more than 5,000 people have died since March as Syria has sought to put down the uprising, part of the Arab Spring of protests that have toppled long-serving unpopular leaders in Tunisia, Egypt, and Libya. Israel Month events are being marked these days in the Indian city of Mumbai, marking a bid to brand Israel as an innovative and thriving country rather than a militant state as viewed on TV. Activities include performances for Indian orphans and students by Israeli puppet cover group Red Band, medical clouds entertaining children dealing with cancer, Hapoel Tel Aviv coaches training distressed youth, an Israeli chef cooking for street kids, and Israeli doctors performing complicated cardiac surgery on children. The unique celebration was initiated by Israel's consul general in Mumbai, Orna Sagiv. The surgeons who operated on the Indian patients came from the Rabin Medical Center in Petah Tikva. They operated on seven children suffering from serious heart problems. Each surgery was broadcast live to dozens of heart surgeons from Mumbai. Centuries after devout Christians embarked on drawn-out and arduous journeys to the Holy Land, a very unique crusade will reach Israel this week. Four Christians from Austria and Switzerland, two men and two women, left Switzerland last June with the goal of crossing 4,300 kilometers by foot until they reach Israel. For seven months, the four pilgrims marched in the sweltering heat and freezing cold, bearing it all for the sake of reaching the Holy Land in time for Christmas. Inevitably, at one stage, they found themselves surrounded by Bashar Assad soldiers who forced them to flee to the south by taxi. The four are set to reach their final destination on Wednesday and arrive at the Allenby Crossing, from where they will march to Jericho. Their journey will officially conclude at a mass in the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem on Friday.